Boy, these were all the rage a few years ago, more like 15. It's a little Sony portable DVD player. Let's see if I can get the lid opened up on it here. And so, yeah, DVP FX 980. It's got a nice little LCD screen here. Some buttons, push to open close. There's the optical pickup down in there. And it looks like all the farther it opens. Take a look at the bottom of it here. DVP FX980. Does not look like a Sony serial number. It looks like it's purchased and rebadged as a Sony. And then uh, this doesn't look like a Sony AC adapter either. 12 volts, 0.95 amps output. Anyhow, the customer said this thing is dead to the world. So I thought I would go ahead and power it up and see what it wants to do. Well, there are a couple of LED indicators right up here in the front. I do have it plugged in, power is applied. Oh, and check this out. Let me get the cell phone out and show you what I see on the Variac current meter. So here's what I'm seeing on the Variac current meter. It looks like either the power supply is driving into a short and it's going into current protection and trying to restart or the power supply itself has a bad bootstrap capacitor and it can't successfully start on its own. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and unplug the jack from the DVD player itself and see if this changes at all. And it did change. So that tells me it might, well, it's still gonna be a power supply issue. It may not wanna start under load. It may start with no load. Yeah, let me go ahead and we'll try to put about a one amp load into this thing and see what the output voltage is and see if the power supply is good first before we go any farther. I've got my dummy load out right here that I use to measure power supplies with and it consists of a bunch of 12 ohm 100 watt resistors, a couple of 6 ohm 50 watt resistors, some 5 ohm 25 watt resistors, and a couple of 10 ohm 25 watt resistors and I can switch those on and off with these switches and you can see I've got jumpers and different colored leads attached to load different power supplies. All I've got connected right now is these 12 ohm resistors. So I've got my 115 set up here in the current mode, measuring the current draw, and my 117 set up in the voltage mode, measuring the voltage output of the power supply. So let's go ahead and power this thing on. And I see 12.24 volts, which is perfectly fine. Now I'll go ahead and just close the switch on one resistor, and I should see about one amp over here, even though it's only rated at 0.95 amps. NSE 0.979 amps, and it did pull the voltage down to 11.95 volts. So I'm going to say the power supply is working absolutely perfectly as designed. I doubt it'll do 2 amps. It does 2 amps. 1.9 amps and 11.6 volts output. Wow. How far will it actually go? Nope. Will not do 3 amps. And at that point, it's doing the exact same thing on the current meter. Let's get the other phone set up here. So you can see the voltmeter's trying to work. They're pulsing on and off. But if I look over here at the current meter right now, it is doing the exact same thing, pulsing on and off. So I'm thinking that there is a short in the power supply of this unit. So we need to get into it and tear it apart. Okay, well, finally got it open. Bunch of hidden screws on this thing. It's got a lithium ion battery right here. Man, they could have put a double battery in here. They had so much room. I wonder if the battery is shorted. 
or if there's a short on the main board somehow. But let's go ahead and at least get the screws out of the main board and get it up and just do a ohmmeter check on the DC jack that lives right here. Okay, so here's the DC input jack right here. And as far as I can tell, this one, this one, and these two are all connected to ground. And this is the positive pin right there. So let's just go ahead and measure from ground to that positive pin. And I see 52K. Nothing wrong with that at all. So why would this thing be pulsing? Let's go ahead and actually measure the DC voltage on the battery and see if the battery might be shorted. So here's the battery terminals. So I'm just going to go ahead and try, I use that term very loosely, and measure between the red and the black. And I see 7.68, 7.69 volts right there. That is perfectly fine. What do we have between the ground and the white? Nothing. Now is that resistance? Let's go to the continuity range. No. Do I have any resistance on that lead? And I have 10K, that might be a, a thermistor measuring the voltage or an RTD, because it is changing. I have my hand on the battery, so it might actually be measuring the temperature of the battery. We can test that really quickly because I see this little bulge right here. Let's get the hot air rework station. And uh, sorry, that was off camera, but I see that little bulge right there. I'm just going to add some heat to it, probably the whole battery. Remember we had basically 10.7K of resistance, which is a fairly common value for an RTD. We'll just heat this up a little bit. I'm blowing 600 degree air, but I'm keeping it probably four or five inches away from it. Okay, we'll give it another test now. Yes, 8.9K, so that definitely is either a thermistor or an RTD measuring the temperature of the battery just to make sure it doesn't get too hot, either in charging or discharging. And you can see that now that I've removed the heat, the value is rising. So I need to find out, there's probably a short on the board somewhere, but where? Let's take a close up look at the board. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the board completely out of this unit, but I need to make sure I take the necessary ESD, electrostatic discharge protections for the laser diode. Now, as I can see, there's three pins right here. There's gonna be a common and basically two hots. One's gonna be for the CD diode and one for the DVD diode, the laser diodes. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a blob of solder across all three of those. Just like that. So basically the laser and the DVD diodes are shorted to ground right now. So they are not subject to electrostatic discharge precautions at this point. Now I can actually go ahead and remove this connector safely. just like that, and there'll be no damage to the laser diodes. Then I can unplug this one connector right here, which is the motor connector. And now I should be able to completely just remove this board from the unit. There's the power supply input, a couple of capacitors, a fuse, Looks like a metal oxide varistor of some type. So now we can actually power this thing up on the bench without the laser diode connected and see what we get. So I have it powered up right now. And so let's go ahead and just connect the negative to ground. And then this should be the positive lead. And as you can see, it's pulsing on and off, just like the current meter was on the Variac. And I do see the needle on the Variac doing the exact same thing. So somewhere on this board, there's going to be a short. Hopefully it's just a little bypass capacitor that's shorted and not internal to one of these ICs. 
All right, so I've got a board view of the main board right here. And so I'm getting a short between the cathode of D13 right here and this ground pad right here. So I'm thinking either C130 or C7 is actually shorted. I just need to figure out which one. I don't want to go ahead and strip them off the board unless absolutely necessary. So here's a schematic of the board. And so over here, just barely off camera, right here is the DC input jack. Let's move that over so you can actually see it. There is the DC input jack. And it goes through that fuse P1 right there. And so I do not have a short at this location right here. It goes through this FET and this diode. And I do have a short right here on DCN to ground. So now it doesn't show C7. I believe C130 is actually C7. It's just misprinted in the manual. So I did go ahead and check the battery terminal from pin three to pin one, it is not shorted. And so that's a 0.15, it's a current regulating circuit right here to control that FET for battery charging. One is for charging and one is gonna be for discharging. So I'm thinking at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and get the infrared camera, plug in the power supply and just see if I see anything getting warm whatsoever and that might help me track down what's going on because it looks like this dcn terminal goes many other places on the board like this one and there's several other pages for this main board and then this is the bottom view of the board not really useful but i thought i'd show it to you anyhow okay so i have the infrared camera set up right here and the board has been powered off for several minutes now those high temperatures that you're seeing are actually just reflections off of the metal on the board. So they're not actually valid measurements, but let's go ahead and power this thing on. There it is, power is applied. And immediately I can see heat up here. And I'm looking for something over here or maybe elsewhere on the board that is getting hot. And I'm not seeing anything else other than that diode, because that diode is dissipating a lot of heat right now because of the drop. Oh, and look at that. Over here, just barely above where the probe is, you can actually see it pulsing on and off where that little circle is just above the number one spot. I think that is gonna be the culprit right there. So I think it's gonna be this capacitor right there because I could actually see that pulsing on and off, generating heat and then dissipating heat as it pulses on and off. So let's go ahead and strip that one off the board and see if the short actually goes away. All right, capacitor is removed. Let's go ahead and check ohms now and see if the short has disappeared. So first, I'm just gonna go ahead and check across that capacitor. You can see it right here on the multimeter and we'll look for shorts. And I see four ohms, if I can stay on it, 4.4 .4 ohms. That is gonna be the problem. Four point four ohms. That thing is toast. Is that all that's wrong? I certainly hope so. Let's go and check the main board now and see if the short has disappeared. Okay, so we'll just use this as our ground and I'll use the USB just to do a lead check and see 0 0.02. Then we'll go right here. Oh, and look at that. I see 400 oh, 400K and dropping as something is charging. So yeah. I'm gonna say that capacitor is the whole problem. Unfortunately, I don't have any surface mount 10 microfarad caps to replace it with, so I'm gonna to have to just throw in an electrolytic and lay it down on its side. I think it's gonna be just fine. So I've got the board just sitting in the unit right now. It's, it's loose, nothing is attached. And so I just wanna go ahead and pop the top on this unit and make sure there's no clearance issues. 
And from what I can see, it's absolutely perfect. I can hear the capacitor moving, which means it's not binding inside. And yes, you can see that it moved all the way down here. So we're just going to go ahead and lay that capacitor there. Nothing goes in there. It's just a dowel pin for locating the circuit board. So I'm going to go ahead and preload one of the solder pads. And a lot of this is going to be in the way, so hopefully it'll stay somewhat in view for you guys. I'm just going to go ahead and set it here. And solder that one pin just like that. Now, if I can just keep from scraping that little capacitor off the board at the same time. We'll add solder to the other pin. And then just to remove any stress from the board, I will add solder to the first pin once again. And I want to make sure the negative lead is on this side, and it is. And then I'll just go ahead and add a droplet of RTV to the end of it to keep it from moving around. And I think this thing is going to be back on the road once again. I think that'll be perfectly fine. Okay, let's throw this thing back together, fire it up and see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to turn this thing on. We'll see what happens over here. And I have a nice current draw right now. It must be charging the battery. And I certainly do see a charge light. Let's go ahead and hit the power switch over here on the side. And I do see a power LED. And I'm hoping we see something on the screen. And yes, we do. Awesome. That thing is working. No disc. Let's pop a disc into it. And look at that. So if we press enter, And it's working. Does the volume work? That's the main thing. And it's working perfectly. Well, there it is. The Sony DVP-FX980. Up and running once again. All because of... I can get a better zoom on that thing. That one little surface mount capacitor that was shorted. That was it.
Anyhow, working perfect once again. I certainly hope you enjoyed the repair on the Sony DVP-FX980. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're done there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really helps my channel grow and I really do appreciate the subscription and the likes. Thank you very much, everyone. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Please be patient. I do have a full-time job and I do these repairs in my spare time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have such a great day. Thank you so much for watching once again. Bye-bye. July 8th, 1989. All right, that was my ham setup from 89. Everyone have a great day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.